Hi, everybody. Welcome. We'll just wait a couple minutes here for everybody to get signed in to the web conference and then we'll get started. Uh, do you particularly prefer if our video is on or off or does it not really matter to you? Um, I don't have any preference. Um, and oh, once, okay. I'll probably mute everybody um, from my end here and then, but I'll allow people to chime in when they need to and unmute. Okay, awesome. Thank you for asking. That would happen to be Hogwarts as your background, would it? Yeah. <laughs> I just need a little owl to be like flying around me. Or I have a little gif of an owl flying around. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, so I did this in the, uh, in the last meeting. Here we, uh, we played a little game in the last meeting and that was to guess what movie the virtual background is from. So we start out with this one. <clears throat> we were seeing who could name the uh, the movie that this school is in. What is it? Out of curiosity. Uh, here's another hint. So it's in it's in Tacoma, Washington. The movie was. Uh, when did that movie come out? It's probably in the between 2000 and 2010 is when the movie came out. It starred Heath Ledger. And yeah, I'm not a movie person, unfortunately. 10, 10 Things I Hate About You. I can't say I've watched that before. All right, okay, let's, let's <laughs> see. Let's see if I have another one. Let's see. Oh, here's one. I don't know if somebody might get this one. Name the movie. If you're just joining, we're, we're playing a little game to name the movie that the school in the background was in. Breakfast Club? Yeah, you got it. I don't know um, how I did that one. We started with this one. Hogwarts? Yeah. And then we went to this one. This one's a tough one. I already said it, but it's that was 10 Things I Hate About You. So oh. It's actually... Okay. Uh, I think they call it Stadium High School. It's in Tacoma, Washington. It's a high school? But this is the best one right here, so. Hey, that looks so familiar, <laughs> but I can't place my. <laughs> and it's actually, so it's actually backwards too. The, the writing is backwards because oh, my, <laughs> huh? my other computer, yeah, it was mirrored and I had to flip it, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're just waiting for a couple more people to join in and then we'll get started. Well, yeah. It's like we have a good group here um, and I'm going to mute everyone as well as everyone comes in, but you can use, click on the microphone that has a red line through it to unmute yourself if you need to speak to me. And we'll be monitoring the chat or simply, or just. Um... Yeah, I'll be monitoring the chat too. I'm sure I'll fall a little bit behind as we get going. Um, but if some of you who have used Zoom in the past, um, feel free to chime in and answer some questions here and there if, if you have that question or answer that question. Is there a push to talk setting on uh, Zoom? Um, I don't believe so. Mm. I think you physically have to click that, that mute button. Okay, awesome. When you want to talk. I shall mute myself. Can I ask a quick question while we're getting ready? Yes, go ahead. Would you suggest earphones in the microphone thing or, or is this clear enough? Like, how do we know? You're actually pretty clear right now. So I would say thumbs up for you. Um, basically, it's it's really gonna depend on the space that you're in. So you're it looks like you're in your office, right, Tanika? Yeah, I am. Um, and microphones are all about proximity. The closer you are to a microphone, the clearer it's going to be. The farther you get away from it, obviously, it's going to be harder to hear um, what part, what people are saying um, into a microphone. Okay. Um, those of you that already saw, I have a virtual background. I'm not sitting in the quad in front of the fountain quad uh, in front of the fountain. I'd probably be wet if I was right now. 
Um, so it's a virtual background. We'll, uh, we'll touch on that a little bit. Um, those of you in the room, you can actually see my controls right now. So um, there's a virtual background option right there on your video setting. And then it allows you to, to add specific photos. So there's also some presets that have video where things move around a little bit. But, okay, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let me switch my, actually my screen is ready to go. We've got a couple of people in the room here with me. So um, from time to time, um, if, if they have a question, I will relay that question to everyone uh, that is participating. Thank you for participating. Um, if you just joined, um, I've, I've got everybody muted. Um, so, but you do have access if you need to chime in and, and speak or ask a question, um, you can just click that microphone button that has a red line through it to unmute yourself. Um, and we, we will get into the controls uh, of, of Zoom a little bit. We're gonna first go through a couple um, housekeeping items here and then we will be on our way. So uh, currently, um, those of you, if you haven't already tried to, or if you haven't already used Confer Zoom, um, Confer Zoom is a video, online video and audio meeting service provided to us by the California Community College System, the CCC Confer Project. It's also sometimes called a CC, uh, CC Tech Connect. Um, basically, what Zoom allows you to do is video conferencing or audio conferencing. We can screen share with participants that are in these meetings. We can use a whiteboard with annotations, breakout rooms, and we can record all of our meetings if we'd like to the cloud or to our local desktop computer. So currently um, our licensed accounts are very are a specific account that's provided to us. So when we go through the sign up process for Confer Zoom, we need to make sure that we are signing up with our CRC email accounts because um, that's how uh, CCC Confer uh, Tech Connect is going to confirm that we are employees of this institution and that our accounts are already paid for um, for us and we don't have to pay anything to use this platform. So. Those accounts are what they call a licensed account. Um, rather than a, ba a basic would be the, the lowest level. There's a licensed account, and I believe there's another type of business pro account. Um, the minutes on the licensed account are unlimited minutes for meetings, and we can have up to 300 attendees. Um, the basic, I believe, is 100 attendees, and you're limited to about 40 minutes of time. So what's going on right now is basically, um, as you can imagine, uh, ConferZoom is getting inundated with requests for signups. So it's causing a backlog of signups. And uh, when you go to sign up, there is currently a delay that's happening. It's saying that it's 72 hours on their posting, um, but I've had a couple faculty members who it's been longer than 72 hours, I think. Um, the district is currently working with uh, CCC Confer to try and work some of this out. Um, the last thing I heard, they're trying to get some kind of a batch like list to them. So maybe they could just batch enroll all, or batch confirm all of us. But um, right now it seems like it's still taking a while for that to come through. Um, so just be patient once you sign up your accounts and they will come through. It will most likely possibly give you that basic account type to begin with. Um, it will say that you're limited to those 40 minutes um, and it will say that you need to upgrade to get more time. Don't pay anything to upgrade. This is a service that is paid for us um, by the California Community College system. So um, just be patient and, um, and hopefully they'll get that working and up and running really soon. Um, so what do you need to host a Zoom conference? So currently I'm on a, a laptop, a Mac laptop, and I'm using the FaceTime video camera on my laptop and I have um, a headset, little just Apple uh, iPhone um, headset with a, mic a microphone built in. Um, a video camera is not necessary. Um, in some aspects uh, for, for the participants, uh, a microphone might not be required. They can watch and listen and it just depends on how much you need to have um, a dialogue back and forth or interaction with your participants. There is a chat that is available um, in your controls that you can use to chat to me and to the group as a whole. Um, but a video camera is optional at this point. Um, just make sure you have a, an, an audio uh, microphone and 
some kind of speakers or headset that you can um, you can listen in and, and speak on. Um, participants can also dial in from a phone. There's a phone number that you get when you create a meeting, so you can also dial in from a phone if you if you don't have an internet connection. Um, a high speed internet internet connection is recommended, um, and some hard drive space if you are recording. Uh, the meeting and you want that recording to go to your local desktop computer, you can do that. You'll need some space on your hard drive or you can go up to the cloud and, and just get your, your recordings from the cloud once the meeting is complete. So the first time you go into Zoom, as many of you experienced probably today when you were joining this meeting, the Zoom application on your desktop will ask you to download an application and that application is doesn't require any uh, administrator rights to install onto the computer. Once that application is installed, then you have access to the meeting. Um, your experience today getting into this meeting is similar to what students will go through in participating in your meetings as well. They're not required to set up any type of an account. To, they can just get the link from you and then join the meeting once they've either downloaded that um, that initial application to open the meeting or they can use their smartphone or tablet device um, so there is an app for zoom on the ios store as well as the android uh, i've heard i think earlier today we had google play um, someone signed in from their phone and was using an android device as well um, those apps are free for them to download so they have access to those um, you still need some type of internet connection to access the, um, the meeting through those devices as well. So the first thing we're gonna walk through is setting up a, uh, a new account. Um, so we're gonna go to conferzoom.org. I'm gonna switch my screen. I'm gonna kind of walk you through too as, as, I'm, as I'm running this meeting, what I'm doing in this meeting. So you won't be able to see my controls that I'm using right now, even though I'm sharing my screen. Um, Zoom's smart enough to know to not show the controls when I'm sharing my desktop with you. Um, so bear with me one second here. Switch gears. Okay, so I'm just going to go into my sharing on my confer zoom controls and I'm going to switch to my Google browser. So now you all can see my Google browser and I've gone to conferzoom.org. So to sign up for a new account, we're going to click the sign up option and fill out the information that's asked of you here. Again, make sure that you use your CRC email address um for this sign up once you click sign up again i said this will be delayed a bit but you should get an email back from confer zoom asking you to click on a link to go and set up your password for your account once your password is set up for the account you are then able to sign into zoom and you will see this um, interface on the web browser. So one of the questions that comes up often is that within Canvas, there is a confer Zoom um, LTI plugin. Um, as far as right now, uh, as I know, the plugin does not link up to confer Zoom the way that we would like it to, and there are not a lot of options in that LTI plugin. So we advise that you go to confer uh, conferzoom.org to manage your account and to set up your meetings. Um, that, that plugin for Canvas just isn't working the way and connecting the way that it's supposed to. Um, so in my account <coughs> currently, the, one of the things that we're going to see is our user type. So there's that licensed account that I was talking about. For those of you that maybe just signed up, this might say basic with the notification of the limitations and just wait for that to switch over and eventually it should switch over to the licensed account. Hey it Mike, can I interrupt you for a second? Yes, go ahead. This, this is Drew, I'm sorry. Hi Drew. Um, you, 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 hi. Um, you mentioned something that I, I wanted to know and I thought I'd better catch it now. Uh, so when we, we, have, we have that uh, 
uh, Zoom interface, Confer Zoom interface that's on Canvas. And I know you mentioned for instructors not to use that. Should we take it off our column in Canvas for students too? That's a good point. That's a good point. So what Drew is talking about is when you go into Canvas, um, Confer Zoom is listed right here. Um, so to remove this from your applications within Canvas so that students aren't getting confused um, with this, we can go into settings and into the navigation tab. And once we find Confer Zoom, we can click these three dots and disable that option within the menu um, navigation for them. So you don't want, so we shouldn't be using that for students either, not just ourselves. No, yeah, yeah. And what, what we'll go through a little bit later here is um, we'll set up a meeting and we'll show you just uh, to, how to get the link for the meeting and place that in an announcement for your students. Perfect, thank um, you. So then it shows up first thing they, when they go into Canvas, they have that announcement with the information they need. Thank you, Drew, that was a, that was a good point. Um, so these are all my personal uh, profile information. Um, if I go to this menu on the left hand side, I now have options for meetings. So um, one of the things uh, associated with what we were just talking about um, in Canvas, providing the link to our students in a Canvas announcement, rather than setting up multiple meetings for your class and having link after link to share with them, there is a way that we can set up a 24 hour reoccurring meeting. And that allows us to share one link with the students and it creates a room that's always open, basically. That doesn't mean that you need to be there at all times. You can indicate into that announcement when you are going to be in that room for, those, for the students, but it provides them with just one link. You have to do it once and then you can leave it for the rest of the time um, for that group um, setting. It, allow, it also allows them as students to go into that space when you're not there, they can collaborate, they can talk, they can communicate with each other as well like they would um, in, a, in another course um, if they're on ground. So to schedule a meeting, that's a 24 reoccurring meeting, we can click on schedule a new meeting. And the first thing it asks me is for a topic. This is the title of the meeting. Um, typically, if we're going to use this for a course, we want to indicate what course that is. And maybe we want to tell them it's a Monday, Wednesday course, just so they know, you know, what, which one, or maybe for you. So you, if you have multiple courses, you know which one it is. And I'm going to put my name, my last name in that title too, so that they associate that as well with your course. Uh, description is optional. You can give them more information if you need to in the description. But as for setting the time and date of the meeting, I'm going to pass over the date, the time, the duration, all this. And I'm going to go right to clicking reoccurring meeting. And I'm going to set that to no fixed time. So once I click this, it's going to remove all of the date and time options that I have on this meeting and go straight to just no fixed time. It's always open. It's always there. They can come and go as they please. You can come and go as you please, but it's always available and ready for this class to be the, the designated meeting space. Um, in meeting ID, um, we're gonna just let this go ahead and generate automatically. Um, I'll talk about more about the meeting ID in just a moment. Um, we don't need to require a meeting password. We already have students signing into Canvas to get to this link anyway, so there's no sense in having them need to submit multiple passwords. The video options on host and participants, these are just defaults. Um, so it just means when we enter the meeting, the host video is going to automatically be set um, and participants, we're gonna leave that off. You always have the option to turn that back on once you're in the meeting um, or turn that off once you're in the meeting if you choose to. The audio uh, options, this is where I was talking about, they can join using the device that they're using, whether that's a, a phone, a tablet, or a computer. Um, they just use the device audio to listen in or speak on the conference. The telephone option is to get that dial-in number if they don't have access to internet. Uh, they can call a number and then listen in to the conference via phone. In the meeting options, we're going to go ahead and select enable join before host. This allows people to get into the meeting before the host um, is uh, present in the meeting. So I want to go ahead and leave that on. Um, you can leave the rest of these off. These are all not essential at this 
point necessarily, unless you wanted to pre-assign some breakout rooms, but for this large space, none of these are really gonna apply too much. Um, plus there are things that we can always do once we're in the, the Zoom conference. Um, recording the meeting. So currently I am recording this meeting that we are in right now um, so that we can share that out later on with you. Um, I at any time can stop the recording and pause it and restart the recording. Um, in that sense, I don't need to automatically start recording this meeting in the cloud um, for this large meeting because I can just do it once I get in to the conference. So let's say 24 hour meeting is always open class and then at that time you have lecture, you can go in and hit record and start the recording. Alternative hosts, if there is anyone that you are working with, um, colleagues that maybe you want to give access to possibly be the host, um, they can be alternate, you can have an alternative host who has all the same permissions to host the meeting that you do. Um, you need to be sure that the email address that you place in here is associated to their confer Zoom account because um, it, uh, it will check in and make sure that that's an active uh, confer Zoom account. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my meeting. And the next thing that comes up, I have uh, calendar um, buttons that I can add this meeting to any of my calendars. And then here's that meeting idea I was talking about again um, previously. So the URL for the meeting is right here. This is the link that you're going to share with any of the participants for the meeting. And the end of that URL is always gonna be the meeting ID. The meeting ID is important. If, uh, if a student is using an iOS device or an Android device, the app that they um, can download and use on their mobile device has an option where you can just type in the meeting ID and join the meeting right away. You don't have to go looking for a link or find that email. Um, if they just know what that ID is, they can just type that in really quick and get into the meeting. Um, so as far as mobile devices go, in the iOS store, um, there is, uh, in the app store, if you just type in Zoom, the uh, first option I believe that came up for me earlier was the Zoom app, which I was gonna say is Zoom Cloud Meetings. Um, so it's just a, it should be a blue icon. I do not know if you guys can see this, and it's kind of breaking up because my virtual background, but it's just a little, it's the same icon as the desktop application. It's just that camera with a blue background. So um, there is a way as a presenter too in the sharing options where I could actually share my mobile device screen if I needed to as well in addition to uh, a web browser or my desktop. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this link right now and I'm going to switch over to Canvas and if I just go to my home page in Canvas. So here's an announcement that I created earlier. Um, in that announcement that I created I just put the link to the Zoom conference and I just gave a message that it's always available to the students and I mentioned to them that I would be there for office hours Mondays at 3 p.m. and lectures will be Wednesday at 10 a.m. Um, so you can give them more context obviously than that um, that's associated with your course but um, that's probably the best way that we can get this link out to our students. Um, Basically, within, because within Canvas, um, all of our students set their own notifications. So in their account within Canvas, um, they decide how they want to get notified. So once you post an announcement, they can have a setting that says, notify me right away by a text message, by an email of when you post an announcement. So they always know kind of like when these things are happening, when they come up, they're getting notified and they get to choose how they get notified in that aspect. Um, for them, all they have to do is click on this link and that will launch the Zoom meeting for them. If they need to download that application, they can, and they can join the meeting. Um, if, if you wanted to use the, the phone number as well, I can go back to my Zoom meeting uh, setup and I can click this copy the invitation, which was just to the right of the link. And here's all the other information such as phone numbers. So. Uh, an iPhone, I can copy this information too and I can place that into that announcement as well. Michael? Yes. I have, I have a question again. This is Drew, sorry. Yeah. Um, so um, relating to this, uh, everything, the stuff that you're showing us, like the 24-hour meeting room and such, it may be worth mentioning too that until uh, we get the uh, Beyond Basic 
this looks different and works differently. You don't have that option of a 24 hour right. until you have the upgrade. Right. So that's something right. I think the, the instructors may want to know for one. Right. The other thing that I noticed is when I, when I copied my meeting and pasted it into my student email, it did not provide any toll free phone number for phone in. And I don't know if that's because I have a basic membership or not, but what you just showed us a moment ago did not look like the invitation that came into mine. But in that it did uh, right here phone numbers. Yeah, that part where it okay. says or telephone dial, it had no US phone numbers available uh, in the basic membership, or at least the email that it gave me with that link. Okay. Just, okay. just an FYI. Okay, thanks. So, uh, and Drew makes a good point too. You can, uh, you know, you don't have to schedule just a recreate meeting. You can go in and just schedule a specific date and time as well. Um, I actually suggest that after this meeting, um, once you do have access to your account, that you go in and just set up a meeting and go into that meeting by yourself, just so you can get used to the controls and how the, the interface works, um, just to get that practice before you have a full class. Um, we can also use this just to specifically for one-on-ones if we need to. Um, you can create a meeting and then share that link out just with that one person that you need to, to communicate with as well. Um, I assume we're going to be doing more of this too within our own institution um, just as we continue to figure out how to function fully online that we're going to have more of these just one-on-one -on -one meetings or as a group like this. Um, are any other questions about setting up the meetings? And scheduling. Yeah, I, I think I missed exact. If you could just really briefly again, mm -hmm. because I have been doing it in the Confer Zoom in Canvas, and it's been working just fine. Oh, it does. Okay. Issue? Yeah. What was the issue with that? Um, we've had some issues where, like, I when I've been into that app, I just don't get any connection. It looks like I'm connected, and it has my account but it won't let me I, like I can't see any of my preset meetings that I've already created within zoom okay. so it's it's like a link is broken and it's not updating and so something's not working properly so maybe it works for some people and it doesn't for others it's possible that was my link that was my experience as well Michael I, I okay. had the same thing you just described I didn't get what Tanika has Okay. And it's possible, maybe it's something based on, have you had your, your account for a while, Tanika? No, uh, no, I do have the, I did the pro account last week, I think. Okay. Or at the beginning of the, actually the beginning of this okay. week, I did the pro account. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, Michael, so now, yeah, go ahead. Can I have a question? Sure. I'm looking at using this for tutoring. So let's say I have a tutor that works Let's say Monday, Wednesday, 11 to 1, Tuesday, Thursday, 10 to 12. Would you recommend that they just do a no fixed time meeting the way you set it up as opposed to specific you can, times? Or you, you can have it reoccurring on certain days. Okay. So you can set up a reoccurring on a, on a date. So meaning once we get that reoccurring, instead of doing right. a, a no fixed time, you can do a daily or weekly so basically, that's what I did for these these meetings that we're in right now. So um, today's meeting at one o'clock reoccurs tomorrow at one o'clock as well, and I'm using the same link for for both of those. Does that make sense? It uh, does. Yeah. And then so another follow up. Actually. Yeah. If I have two tutors whose schedules overlap, I assume it's better for each one to schedule their own meeting as opposed to having them in a single meeting. Does that make sense? Um. Or you can or just extend. It, it, you can extend the time, and, it, and it's all one link, and then the next person just takes over. Is that? Um, is it? I guess I'm thinking out loud. Because sometimes we may have two tutors helping the same student or something. Okay. So they both. So, so you, I'm, I'm just wondering about pros and cons of. Well, that might be either. something too, where you're utilizing breakout rooms too. Um, okay. So once you're in a main conference like this, I have an option to set out set up as many breaking breakout rooms as I want. And then I can manually put people in those breakout rooms and then they have their own conversation within that breakout room. Can I chime in on that one actually? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I'm actually a tutor at CRC's tutoring center and Great. how they have it set up for us is that each person, each tutor that is actually gets their own confer zoom account and then mm -hmm. they get their own individual um, recurring meetings every day. Oh, there we go. 
So um, it's not that all tutors share a single tutoring room. It's that each tutor has their own individual room, which students will join yeah. when they need that tutoring assistance. And, and again, I would work with your deans too as well. And just so to make sure that you're falling within all of the guidelines that you guys normally do with tutoring, because you may have some guidelines that just, I, I don't know, you know, that it's not my area. Um, that you need to specifically meet a certain standard um, of setup for that. So, but let us Thank know you. if we can help in technically in helping you set this up. Great. Thank you, Bo. Okay, we're going to switch gears right now and let's um, actually have one chat item here. Oh, okay. Thank you, Brian, for chiming in there. Um, Uh, he's just asking if uh, thinking in a more asynchronous fashion, at least initially, is Zoom a good option to record a lecture and then be able to post the video to Canvas for students to view on their own schedule? So it's a good question. Um, the way that I, there's two options here. And so what I've been advising faculty members to do is if you need the student interaction and you need student responses in that asynchronous way here, like we're doing right now, where we are, we're having a dialogue back and forth, Converse, Confer Zoom is gonna be the best option for you um, once it's up and running um, and you have access to it. Um, whereas if you just need to record a lecture, you just need to record your PowerPoint and your voice and then provide your students with a video, Canvas Studio is gonna be a better option for you and it's more streamlined and simpler to use um, in that aspect. So right now I just clicked on Studio. Some of you, this will say Canvas Studio in your, your Canvas account. And right here, there's a record button. Canvas Studio allows you to screen capture record and you can use a webcam with that and audio microphone while displaying your screen just like we are now but this is only one way, right? It's just me recording a video and then I can provide that video to my students as a lecture. And then maybe that video you could just place in a discussion board where they can then comment and discuss um, the lecture on a discussion board. So that would be an alternative that's not this, um, this live dialogue. Um, you can also do just a webcam capture tube for a video just using your webcam and talking to the video camera. If you have pre, Recorded videos, you can add video files um, into Canvas Studio as well. Canvas Studio is basically like a media library. It's, it's to house video and then to place in other places within Canvas. So students won't see this area. Um, can, uh, studio for us is just for the instructional side, but students do have access in certain places to record their own videos and post them up. And this is opening up kind of a whole nother box, but we're, I'm planning on getting more of these Confer Zoom training sessions about Canvas Studio in the near future too as well to show, to show that side of things. Uh, awesome. Michael, before you go away though from that yeah. page there. Um, so just so I'm clear, if, if, I, if my goal were simply audio and PowerPoints, at least for the time being, and I would prefer asynchronous, uh, I would record using my screen, not the web camera. Is that correct? Or you can do both. You can still do a webcam too. You can have a webcam down in the lower corner here and have your PowerPoint up. Okay. Well. But presumably the webcam would show the talking head. That would be me. Right, right. Got it. Or if and there's some or if there's something that you need to you display. Want to show so so we've had a lot of um, we've had some faculty from the arts who have come in um, who need to show who are teaching drawing and they need to show them drawing on space. So they can use their webcam to display um, them drawing as part of the lecture as well. So you can use that physically to show some kind of action as well. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so we're gonna get into the, um, the controls now of Zoom and how you actually function once you are into a Zoom conference. I'm gonna switch this over real quick. So the first time you go into Zoom, once you've downloaded the application and, um, and you join a meeting um, or host a meeting, um, you're gonna see an interface similar to this. Down on the bottom are the controls. Um, it will look a little different depending on what you have active on your computer. So for example, um, let me show you the screenshot and switch to my desktop actually. 
So I just switched from my um, PowerPoint presentation to my desktop so that you can see these screenshots that I'm taking as I go. Um, because you're not seeing my controls, I have to kind of just uh, work around this and do a lot of screenshots to show you this. So um, this is at the top of my screen currently. So depending on how you have your windows configured and, and what options you have open, um, Zoom will occasionally want to go to this um, toolbar that's compressed down for you to save you some space. Um, or it could be on the bottom like this. It just depends on and how your platform is set up. So the first thing that we see is going to be this mute option. That is your microphone. We already talked about you can click the microphone to unmute or, or mute yourself. So currently I am not muted. If I am muted, I have a red line through that icon like I do the video down here in the lower part of the screen. Um, the little arrow um, is a, a menu that pops up when you click this arrow and gives you your options on your device to choose which input for sound you wanna use for your microphone, for your speaker, or for your webcam. Um, the next over on the lower portion here is invite. That just allows you to get to the link and the meeting ID options for the meeting that you are currently in. Um, manage participants. So that is gonna allow us to see, and I'm gonna kind of do some of this really quick here. Uh, let's see. Sorry, one second. I'm trying to find a way to do this without showing too much. Um, I'm going to show part of the screen. Um, so what I just took a, took a screenshot of is the, so all of the participants are listed on this side, on the left side of this window, and this is the right side of the window. So I see all participants here. Um, down on the bottom, closer to the left side, I have a mute all button. Um, I also have uh, mute buttons here that I can click individually to if I wanted to control when you when your microphone is active or not active. Um, I can I can open that up, um, but I just let other participants manage that themselves. Um, there's also a space right next to the microphone that shows up here. You have an option as a participant where you can actually raise your hand. Um, I, not completely sure where it's in your navigation somewhere, but you have an option where you can actually, I think it's under this more button or something in your participants. Um, you can raise your hand and it gives me a notification that pops up on my screen that says so-and-so is raising their hand. And then I would then be able to unmute that person if, if I wanted that much control over it. Um, it also has other icons like a little coffee mug, like you're, you're away and you're getting coffee or something like that. So um, this is one way you manage participants. You also uh, are seeing most likely a window that um, has all of our pictures and names on a sidebar, or maybe it's on the bottom top. It's just in a different place for your, um, for your window. And you're seeing something like this with all of us listed. Um, that's another way you can manage participants when you hover over those uh, people that are listed. I have more controls that I can mute or unmute or pull that up. Um, I can stop video. I can chat with that individual. I can uh, do a variety of different things to interact with that person that's in that, um, that window. Michael, should we be seeing you do this or should we just be seeing the PowerPoint? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't switch back over. My fault. Thank you. Okay. Let me know. Um, sorry, it took me a second to figure out like, wait. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm switching so many times. Like I, I kind of forget that I need to, to switch back here and do this. Um, the nice thing is I'm taking screenshots, so I have them all right on my desktop right now. Uh, so let me just pull those back up. Okay. Okay, so this is um, when I start talking about the toolbar that I have on top. These are the controls that I am currently seeing right now. 
Um, I have more options on the end. It's just compressing it down. So I don't have as, uh, um, it's not taking it up as much real estate for me. Um, um, when I was talking about the uh, managed participants, um, pull this up so you can see all of them at the same time. So in talking about managing participants, um, if I click on this manage participants, I see a window that has everyone listed right here on the left hand side. And then I have your microphones, your video cameras, so I can actually go in and unmute um, people if I need to, if I was going to control that, that aspect, if I didn't allow um, others to unmute themselves. Um, right next to the microphones in this column right here that you don't see anything, that's where a little hand would, would raise if someone raised their hand. I believe in your controls, there's a place, I, I believe it's in Manage Participants, uh, it might be more down here in the bottom, where you can actually have an option to, to raise your hand and I see a notification of that. Um, off to the left um, in this portion, I uh, have a button that says mute all or unmute all. Um, so I have control to do that. Um, I've just blocked this out a little bit just because I don't know how much you guys see right now, but there are phone numbers and things. So I was just trying to keep those from, um, because this is being recorded, trying to keep those from being visually um, displayed. Um, are there any questions about managing participants? This is one of the things about using Zoom that takes a little practice. Um, and that's why I say to go in and create meetings on your own and get in and use the interface because there is a lot of multitasking that has to happen while you're active with a confer Zoom um, meeting session going on because you have people chatting, um, asking you questions, and then you're switching. Uh, I'm doing a lot more switching than you normally would. Um, hopefully, uh, you wouldn't have to switch over as much as I do during this. But it is a certain aspect of multitasking that you kind of have to get used to all the windows that are active and open in front of you. Um, so moving on, um, one of the things that shows up in my toolbar is polling. Polling is um, not open by default, but if you did want to do polls, Polls are located in the settings on the Confer Zoom uh, page here. So if I click on settings and I scroll down, this is where all of your detailed information of what Zoom is doing for you, you can turn on or off. There's a lot in here. I'm not gonna go over um, much of this, but down this list, you'll see polling and there's a little toggle switch to turn that on if you want to see polling show up in your toolbar. Once you go into polling, it basically will allow you to add questions. Um, it will come out to a web, web browser for you to create those questions and then send them out to the attendees. Um, moving on in the control panel, uh, new share. So this green button is how we are going to choose what we want to share with our audience. Um, when we click on new share, we get a window that looks like this. And so currently I have the option to share my desktop with you. Um, what's highlighted in blue is what is active right now. Um, I have another preview window that's open on my computer. I have Google Chrome open and available. I have a whiteboard that I can draw shapes on and I could do some annotation um, tools uh, such as text and uh, erasing and drawing and coloring and that kind of thing. Um, I also can use a mobile device uh, wirelessly or wired to have that option to show that device and what's on screen on the other device um, through uh, ConferZoom too. Uh, the, if it was wired, it'd be connected to my laptop right now and I could pull that up or um, if I'm on the same network, then there's a way to get into that wirelessly. So you basically just click what you want active and then click the blue share button down the corner and that allows everyone to see that um, that option. Was there a question? Just a quick comment on that, Michael. Yeah. Um, I tried using the um, casting your mobile device. Apparently, it's an iOS only function. So if okay. you're on an Android phone, that isn't that option doesn't exist. Thank you. Which is most likely why this says iPhone, iPhone, iPad only right here. I have a question. Or not like, only by. Yeah, go ahead. The whiteboard is that an app? No, um, it's included within okay. uh, screen share. So he'll okay. pull it up real quick for you. So I have a toolbar at the top of this whiteboard um, where I can select my tool. So I can do uh, 
a text box um, or I can draw. I have different uh, drawing tools on here. So like lines and it's pretty typical for, for most little drawing apps that you have. Um, you can also do shapes and a variety of other things, change colors. Um, Michael. Yes. Would you be willing to just pull us one time so we can see what that looks like? Sure. In just a moment. So it opens up a new window for the poll within Zoom, and then it also opens my browser here. Um, Would they see us doing this? Um, only if you're sharing your, your whole screen. Okay. So I'm sharing my entire desktop right now. So basically, so you can see all the things that are on my desktop. And, um, but if you're sharing, um, you, you, so one thing that you can do, so that's a good question. So in the process, I'm gonna launch this poll right now, by the way. Um, in the process of doing so, I, I have a, another option on that toolbar right at the top that is pause share. So one of the things I could do is I could pause my sharing at the time I make that poll so that you don't see it and then resume once I'm off of that screen. Okay, that's pretty awesome. And then here is the window. Um, at the moment I took the screenshot um, that I see on my end for the polling. Do you, do you all have a similar window where you get to see the results of the polling or? Is it just the questions? I just answered the question to hit submit. I didn't okay, see so you don't see this window? Okay. I don't see it either. Okay. I don't see it either. Okay, so I'm gonna end the poll right now. And let's see. Okay, so I can share results. Um, so let me show you this as well. So this is what came up for me once I ended the poll. So I can share the results right there on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And so now that is sharing. Let me know yeah, what happens on your end. Okay. Yeah, it looks just like it did before with, with all the answers, like what you had. Okay, good, good. Thank you. Very good. Okay, so um, any other questions on screen sharing while we're there? Um, I can always just stop the share too by clicking the stop share button. And that takes me, uh, oops, wrong one. <laughs> takes me back here. So you should see nothing now except for probably my image or my video or something like that. Uh, you also see the poll right in the middle of everything. If we don't okay. The, okay, good. Close it. I have a question. Yes. Uh, when you're sharing and you have, the, let's say you have one document open and you want people to write on that document can they do that Ooh, good question let's let's find out here let me uh, i don't think i want to look great <laughs> One second. Uh, okay, good. Here we go. I believe, do you have an annotate um, in your control panel? No, I don't think so. No. At the top view options, and you drop that. If if you have annotate available to you, um, go ahead and try to to click that and see if you can. Right, yeah. Somebody, there we go. Now, I'm what my guess is is that this is only going to be in that window. So the problem with this is getting if you need to get this out of Zoom, it's not going to work. 
um, meaning it's not going to be a document that shows up um, with the annotations on it. So and I think we had this conversation in the last Zoom conference too. Um, I can like I can I can save the the annotations, but it's not going to be in a document. So does that answer your question? So it, it kind of it works for in this moment, but not as far as taking it beyond beyond Zoom outside of Zoom as a document. That answers my question. Thank okay. you. Um, so uh, moving on with the, the toolbar, let me take another screenshot so you can see more here and switch back to my desktop. Um, so moving on, there's the annotate feature, um, which is basically the whiteboard annotations on the screen that I can do. Um, and then the more options uh, feature on the list, it just gives me the chat, um, again, the invite. There's where I can start or stop the recording of the current meeting. And then also I have, we have closed captioning. Um, closed captioning, I, I don't have a lot of information on that right now, but I'm assuming that you can put in a request before the meeting to CCC Confer to have a captioner join the meeting and caption live and they have a tie-in that comes back in to display those captions um, while we're having our meeting. Um, I'm not sure what the status of that is right now because I'm, I'm assuming they're probably getting overloaded too, so I don't know how available captioners are at this point. Um, breakout rooms, uh, we just discussed that a little bit. When I go to breakout rooms, I, can, I have an option to um, automatically or manually set up breakout, set up breakout rooms. So if I click the manual option, I'm going to get a new, uh, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say one, uh, one breakout room. Um, you can have multiple breakout rooms, um, but once you set this up, let me get another screenshot for you. Um, so once you have the breakout window available to you. Um, you can have multiple breakout rooms, so you can just keep creating. I've had, I've created like up to like 15 of them, I believe, and it didn't stop me. Um, once you click that blue assign button, it will give you a listing of everyone who is participating in this video conference, and you can manually check names of who you want to go into that breakout room. And then you have options on the bottom to allow participants to return to this main area at any time or to close the breakout room after a certain amount of minutes. The other options that I have um, in that more menu are I can disable uh, annotation for, as, as the host of the meeting, you have a lot of flexibility on what you can allow your participants to do. Um, I can let other people, uh, you know, share their screen if I wanted to and, and a variety of other things. Um, one thing before I forget that I want to do as well is I wanna share the PowerPoint with you um, in the chat. Um, so in the chat window, I'm going to upload a file right now of the PowerPoint. And you can get to that through the, the chat window. Um, when speaking of, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and just answer a couple questions here on the chat. Um, let me actually, before I forget to, I'm going to show you where the recording goes when we're done. Um, or if you host a meeting, this is where the recordings go when you're done. Um, once the, the meeting has concluded or you have stopped the recording, in your Zoom account on conferzoom.org, you're going to have a recordings location in the menu. And all of your meetings will show up here in this list. And you can click on the blue uh, file links right here. So currently, um, as you can see, like our 10 a.m. meeting from this morning is still processing and not available to me yet. Um, it does take a while, especially depending on the length of the meeting. Um, but if you click on the blue link there, now you have access to all the files. So they will provide me with the video uh, file, an audio only file, an audio transcript, and a chat file 
Um, and I believe the video files and the audio files are MP4 and MP4A. The audio transcript, um, I want to say that was like a VTT file possibly. Um, and then the, the chat file is just a text document that has the entire chat, chat into, uh, in a file format for you there for TXT. Um, any questions? Um, it's a lot to take in the first time you go into it. So be sure to practice, um, go in and just create some meetings and you can always create a meeting and then delete it if you don't use it. Um, it's not going to do any harm to, to have your meetings, um, sitting and waiting for you there, um, and to have multiple, um, is there anything I didn't cover that, that anyone's interested in? Uh, I have a quick question. Over? I have yeah, a quick ahead, question, Jay. Michael. Um, so as one who has never recorded myself, especially visually giving a lecture like this, so I noticed you're using a backdrop and most of us are gonna be doing this from home, very right. likely. Um, I'm not sure I like the whole green screen idea, which is what I'm calling what's behind you there. Yeah. Um, do you have any advice like lighting or anything else we should know about or just kind of see what looks right to us? And Yeah, I mean, if, you know, Pending that you have some control, some flexibility on that. Obviously, um, you know, a laptop is is nice if you have a laptop because then you can go to different places within um, your environment. Um, as far as lighting goes, if you're able to be near a window, um, a window works as a, a great light source. And so the key is that you keep the light at a 45 degree angle to you um, to light at least a portion of your face. Um, or if you have a light in the room, um, you don't always have to shoot a light directly at your face, but you, if you're near a wall, you can actually shoot that light at a wall and that light will bounce onto your face and light enough of you. The main thing is that people can see you um, and that it's pleasing um, to them that you're not just completely in the dark, basically um, limit distractions behind you as much as possible. So for me, um, I have that virtual background up, but I mean, really, I don't need to have that on at this point. If I had that turned off, here I am. I just have a black curtain on the wall in my office here that I'm, I'm in front of, and I'm just in the regular lighting of the room. I'm not near a window or anything like that. So okay. um, the, in the virtual backgrounds, I mean, you, you want to have more light in the room if you can. I think it's going to do a better job at... Um, keeping the, the background, uh, it's gonna break up a little bit, right? And the less light you have, the harder it's gonna be for that virtual background to work. Um, I have the same situation at home, like where I'm gonna be working out of at home at my house, I'm just kind of in a spare bedroom where I've, I've got some things and I've, there's like a bed behind me and stuff and my, I'm too far away from my camera. And so it was, <laughs> it was struggling to, you know, to put that virtual background in. So, um, you know, work with as best you can, you know, we, we know everybody, you know, I'm sure I have a, th I have a three-year-old who's almost four. I'm sure at some point you're going to hear, him. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to come by the dogs are going to bark, you know, try to just limit the distractions as much as you can. But, but I think everybody knows too, it's, it, it's, you know, we'll do the best we can, but there will be some disruptions at times. And, um, but video is good because it does give our students a sense of, they get to put a face to a name, you know, they, they, it makes it more personal to them. And I think it's, it's one of those times where it's important that, you know, they see a face and hear from us and, and we can be kind of a little bit of that calming factor to them right now too, and let them know that we really do support them as much as we possibly can. So, okay, thank how you. do you get a virtual background? Virtual background. Okay, we went over this a little bit in the beginning. I'm um, sorry. I got and I will, I will gladly go over it again because I love it. I think it's fun, um, especially being a video person. Because um, this is pretty impressive. I, you know, I, my background, most of you, a lot of you know that my background is in video. And I went through our television program here at CRC. And to do this in the past was not possible, right? It's, it, it, we would need a green, like we're, Drew called it green screen before where you had to have a green cloth behind you and the lighting had to be perfect and to do this. So it's really cool that we can do this now. But in your controls for Zoom, under the video options, 
you can choose your virtual background. It will, the first time you go into it, it'll ask you probably to download. There's one um, key little plugin that it needs to do this, but you can download that. And then when you go to choose uh, a background, a virtual background, a new window is gonna pop up. And let me do another screenshot. And in that virtual background setting um, within the Zoom control, Zoom app, you have options to choose to change your background. If you wanna add a custom photo, you just hit this plus sign and you can add a photo. That's how I've added some of these others. Um, that's how I was able to get um, Hogwarts. <laughs> the others, we were playing a little game uh, at the beginning to name a movie that the school was, was in earlier, so. Um, so I'm gonna- I'm So go sorry, ahead. will you do that just, that last part just one more time because I, I, I was trying to do it while you were doing sure. it and I couldn't figure it out. And then participants can do the same thing? Uh, yes. Uh, Tanika, is, is, is this where we were at? Or did you need me to go farther back than that? Yes, no, that, okay. that was it, okay. So you can, you can choose virtual background and then click the image that you want. And if you want a custom image, you can um, click this plus sign to add an image in. Okay, and and if, if mine didn't do that, too. didn't give me these options. Okay. The, uh, the virtual background uh -huh. option. Um, did it ask you to download anything uh, let me try once you went to, I, it might be only specific, like it might only be on a certain um, version. So if you have uh -oh. an older version of the, the Zoom application, I know this is like a newer feature. That Got wasn't. it, so maybe I'll, okay, so I will uh, do that. Um, lastly, has kind of jumped around. Um, lastly, um, in my PowerPoint presentation, there's some links at the on the very last slide. Um, and I'm just waiting for my screen to turn over here. Um, on the very last slide of the PowerPoint, there's some links and information. Oops. Ah, sorry. The mouse is jumping around a little bit here. Um, so there's a link there to our distance education site that we just created last week and posted up uh, more information for you to get help on Canvas and Zoom and a variety of other um, links and training uh, resources for you. Um, my email is right there on the bottom. Feel free to reach out to me or to the distance education team. Um, pay attention to your emails that are coming from Pat Cranley. Um, we'll probably send out some links to these videos once I have access to them and have them ready to uh, give you a, a video uh, link for this recording from this uh, training session. Um, oh, good. So you're going you're gonna to send that out when it comes. I was going to yes. ask that question. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And just don't change um, too many of your personalized settings I learned last week because I actually did two of these trainings last week and I made the mistake of checking a box, I, un, unchecking a box I was not supposed to uncheck and I didn't get my recording last week. So, so be careful what you said. So um, at this point, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just stop the recording, but I'm gonna stick around and answer questions for you. So um, thank you everyone for coming um, to this meeting and hopefully it was valuable to you and Best of luck on your online ventures and we're here to help. So um, please reach out to us. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.